king, and Israel will at last be characterized by the holiness unto the Lord. Then the evil and foolish shepherds scattered the sheep, God's people. That's mentioned in Zechariah chapter 1, as well as in Ezekiel chapter 34. The shepherd is a figure of speech for the leaders, for the people of God. These shepherds are not identified by name, but the account suggests lessons for us. When Christ came, the people were a sheep without a shepherd. And he is the good shepherd. John chapter 10, verses 11 through 15. Elders are shepherds of the flock who must tend the flock under the chief shepherd. 1 Peter 5, verses 1 through 4. Elders should pay close attention to the condemnation given in the Old Testament where shepherds were misleading the Israelites and causing them to go astray. I heard this this morning, I think it was, in the announcements that Richmond Hill is going to be appointing elders. Those are bishops. Those are overseers. They're shepherds. And they will have a responsibility to oversee, to guide, to guard, and to shepherd the, the flock. And it will do the elders here a good turn, turn, a good thing, if they'll go back into the Old Testament, especially in the book of Ezekiel, and see the condemnation of those elders in the Old Testament who had forsaken their duties. Not only were they not guarding and overseeing and shepherding the flock, but they were actually leading them away from God. Because it is a great responsibility to be an elder, a shepherd, a bishop in the New Testament church. Now finally, this afternoon, we look at the Messianic passages in Zechariah. We've already talked about Zechariah 6, verses 12 and 13. We've already talked about the implications of that particular passage. There are other Messianic prophecies. Christ will come as a triumphant but peaceful king. Zechariah 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. And in Matthew 21, verses 1 through 5, that is exactly what Jesus did when he entered the city. The Bible tells us that Christ will be betrayed by a friend and will be sold for 30 pieces of silver. Zechariah 13, verse 6. And we read about that in Matthew 26, 31. Zechariah 11, 12 and 13 also talks about the Messiah being betrayed by a friend. Of course, we know that person was Judas Iscariot. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10 tells us that the Messiah, the Christ, will be crucified. And he was crucified as the New Testament records. The shepherd, Christ, will be smitten and the sheep scattered. Zechariah 13 and verse 7. Remember what happened after the crucifixion? After Jesus died on the cross, all the disciples scattered. They were discouraged because they thought they did not yet understand what was involved in what Jesus had to say when he said, destroy this temple in three days, I'll build it up. They did not understand that Jesus was talking about that he was going to rise from the dead. Even after he rose from the dead and is getting ready to go back to heaven at the ascension, they still did not understand the concept of the kingdom because they asked him, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? It would take the coming of the Holy Spirit that would enable them to finally, fully, and completely understand God's will, to speak that forth in their preaching, and to write those things down guided by the Holy Spirit so that they could use those words given by God to let the people in the first century and for all time to know God's will for us. God is alive and active in human history.
Remember what Daniel said in Daniel 4, verses 24 and 25. This is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the king, that they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Daniel already said that in the second chapter. God sets up kings, and he removes kings. God is in control. And in the year 2019, sometimes we think this world is completely spinning out of control. We need to remember who is in control. God. God's in control. Not this country's government. Not the governments of countries around the world. Not China's government. Not Russia's government. God is in control. And we are God's children. And we must also remember what is the most important thing in this life. What is it? It is to go to heaven. And so our goal in this life is to fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole of man. And we are to live our lives in such a way that we prepare through the grace and mercy of God to be saved for all eternity in heaven. God kept the promises He made through the Old Testament prophets in that He has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We don't have to worry about how bad it gets on this earth. When we leave this earth, the Lord has not yet returned. We leave this earth. If we've been faithful to God, then we're going to paradise. And there we'll wait for the coming of the of Christ to come again and to take us to heaven. Someone mentioned the other day, Winfred Clark, who was the nephew of uh, Franklin Kane. When Franklin Kane passed away, Brother Clark spoke at the funeral, and he said, don't be sad. My uncle Franklin has lived his whole life to make it to this day. And that's what we're doing. We're living our whole lives so that we can finally make it to paradise and then to heaven. And if we want to benefit from the promises that God has made, we must render obedience to the gospel of Christ. And we must live in such a way that through God's grace and mercy, we can have a home throughout eternity in heaven. And so, not only Zechariah, but every Old Testament book was looking forward to the coming Messiah. Someone said in the past that Acts 2 was the hub of the Bible. All of the things talking before Acts 2 was pointing to that particular day, that particular event. And that then everything sprung forth from Acts 2 with the beginning of the church and the spreading of the gospel throughout the world. We should be so thankful that we are children of God, that we have access to all spiritual blessings and that through our through our obedience and through that wonderful grace and mercy that God has provided to all mankind we can have a home throughout eternity in heaven Thank you.